Welcome back to DJ Tutorials, and we are continuing on with our geometric compositions for beginners. This is going to be part three, and we're going to be looking at materials. So if you haven't done uh, the first two parts, please go back and do those. And if you haven't done the challenge to try and make a, uh, you know, duplicate or use a reference of another composition to help you, uh, please do that so that you can really make sure that your composition looks really, really nice. And this is the uh, composition that I came up with. I used, just so that we are all very clear, I kind of used this reference here that I found online to sort of help me out with sort of a general idea, but I wanted to make it a little bit tighter and a little bit better. So here we have a uh, the composition that I created and I added a cone here and we have the sphere the cube you can see here that I scaled it I hit s and then I scaled it a little bit on the z to give it a little bit of a different um, look and this is what I came up with so hopefully you have a really nice looking general composition here to start with so we can go ahead and get started now in this one we're going to be doing materials, very, very basic materials. I'm going to make sure my screencast keys are turned on here. So like I said before, down here on the bottom left, you can see my uh, mouse, uh, wh what I'm doing, what I'm pressing. And then below that, you can see the keyboard with the mouse and what I'm doing as well. So hopefully you don't get lost if you uh, need that help. So before we really start adding our materials here, what we're going to do is we are going to uh, apply the scale to our objects. And um, this one, you might have, let me uh, let me actually do this here. So let's do, um, let's do this and then bring this up just to mimic more of what you have because I actually already applied this scale and I want to show you why I'm doing what I am doing. Okay, so let's say you have something like this, okay? And what we want to do is we want to apply the scale because uh, when we start adding materials, when we start adding um, other sort of modifiers, and I'll show you what the issue is in a second with the modifiers when we do this and you don't apply your scales properly, um, or we start adding image textures or something later, when we start doing the more advanced materials, you're going to run into a lot of problems with um, some of this because it sometimes will use the object data to map images or uh, to map your modifiers. So to keep things nice and easy, what you want to do is make sure that once you've found the scale that you want, control A and then apply the scale. Now you can see that when I did that, it changed how the bevel is done on this background object. And for you, you've probably seen that as well. So what you want to do is go over here to the bevel uh, modifier, make sure that this is open, and left click and drag that to make sure that you actually have a nice rounded effect like we had before. So it's really no issue. Now if you, uh, and this is what you want to do, and make sure that you keep a good practice of this, if you left click the cylinder, you can see that it has um, a scale of one uh, and it's not an issue here. So I've actually applied the scales to all these, but it, what you should do right now is left click, hold shift to select them all, hit control A and apply the scale. And if you find that your bevel has changed and you don't like it, go back in here, change the bevel sizing or shape or whatever, to match more or less what you had before. And the same thing with your cone and your cube, and just make sure that this is all set to what you want. Um, it's important to be in the practice of applying the scales once you have your, uh, your object in your final sort of form. And this is really what I want them to be in our final composition here. So applying the scale is really no problem. So go ahead and take a moment and do that. And uh, if you get a little bit lost, just rewind and go back and see what I did there. Okay, now let's go ahead and start adding materials to our objects here. So what we're going to do is we're going to go up here and we're going to uh, slide on over to the shading tab at the top. And we're going to left click on that. And what that does is it pulls up this uh, view here. And 
um, you can see that everything is looking quite a bit different. If we hold Z down, you can see that it's now in the material preview. And if you go over here and you uh, go to solid, it goes back to the view that we saw before and wireframe and material preview. Don't go to rendered yet. So material preview. And we can see a couple things in this interface. Number one, we have you know this uh, horizontal split. And below we have, uh, so up here we have our, you know, our scene. And then down here we have what's called the node tree for our shading. And this is the new way of doing shading in gaming engines, in uh, CGI, all of that. And if we look over here, we can see that um, uh, if we go to the materials properties uh, tab right here, you can see that there is a basic generic material that's added to our uh, cube. So what we're going to do is we're going to start manipulating this uh, cube here to have a different color and a couple different properties. But before we do that, I want to explain to you one other thing that we're seeing. So if we move around the scene, you can see that down here, this sort of mirror ball here is showing a background or some sort of scene that's being reflected. And this diffused uh, sphere here, you can see that the shading is changing as we move the camera around. And basically what it's doing is it's mapping what's called an HDRI or high dynamic range image to our background to give you a kind of more realistic um, uh, shading of what this stuff would look like if there was a real environment that these objects were in. We can actually change this image by going up here to this little drop down, and then right here, clicking this ball and changing it. We're going to change it to this one here, but you can see that there's a Studio Light um, uh, Night.exr. Uh, they call it Studio Light, but that's basically the HDRI image setup. Um, there's an interior. There's this forest, there's a courtyard, there's a city, and if you left click on these, you can see that the overall shading is changing quite a bit. But what we really want to do is we want this one right here, because it maps more of what you would see if you were really setting up these objects inside of a studio and photographing them. So let's go ahead and select that one. And this is more or less what we're going to be actually using for our final in an HDRI image that we're going to download. But let's just use this for now. So what we want to do at this point is we actually want to uh, isolate this cube so that we can see this by itself and how it's reacting to the environment. So let's hit forward slash on the numpad and we're going to go into what's called local view. And if you kind of toggle between hitting the forward slash, you can see that you can go in and out of that local view. And what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at this node right here. And we're going to, by the way, just really quick, if you don't see this uh, material, um, all you need to do, and I'm going to hit this little minus here, all you need to do is hit this new button and it will come up with a material. I, uh, you may have done some things inside of your scene and you're not seeing that. Um, so uh, just make sure that you hit that button and I'll, I'll be covering that again um, later to show you what it looks like when an object doesn't have a material on it. So what we can do here is we can actually change this material and we're going to call this red underscore cube. Okay, and hit enter to apply that name. And we're going to adjust the stuff here. We're not going to adjust it in the preview, sorry, the surface right here, this little drop down we are not going to be altering it here. We want to get used to, we want to get used to the node editor here. So let's just take a look at a couple of these things. And this may look daunting, don't worry about it. I'm gonna go over this very, very simply with you. So how this basically works is, uh, this is what's called the BSDF, um, or the principled BSDF node. It's what's called a, um, physically based render node, which means that it tries to use realistic um, ways that objects are realistically rendered or you know viewed in real life. And it has all these things here, and we're only gonna touch a couple of them just for this um, easy beginner tutorial for materials. If you go down here, um, we're actually gonna change the base color. So if you zoom in on the mouse wheel down here, and we left click, 
oops, make sure that you stay within the window here. If you go out, it'll actually get rid of it. And you can left click and drag this around. And you can see, let me move this a little bit here. And you can see that as we move this around, it's changing the color. And we want this to be red. So let's just pop it right here for now. And just to talk a little bit about this, HSV, this means hue, saturation, and value. And all this means is hue is, you can see the white dot flipping around. That's the actual, in quote, color, if you want to call it that. So let's go back over here. The saturation, if we move this, you can see that it's going from highly saturated all the way to the edge here, which is really, really red. Let's click back in here. And if we move it all the way to the left, you can see that it goes completely white. Let's put it about here at a, you know, around a 0.5. Now the value, if you look at this slider right here, if you go left and right, it's changing the value, which is how bright it is or how white, this is a tint. And then um, a shade, which is adding um, grays or blacks to the uh, color. So if you go down to the left, you'll see that now it's completely black. Let's go ahead and pop this up to like the middle here and let's take, let's actually go down here and we want this to be like a deep red, like something like that. You can actually click and drag this too. So let's go about there and let's pull back on the saturation just a touch right about there. Yeah, uh, just a little uh, word to the wise, you don't really wanna go too sort of grayed because you can't really see the color and you don't wanna go too saturated. You wanna be somewhere in the middle and you never really want to use full, full bright and not full, full dark like this for a color unless you really want to. But for this, just to make it a little bit more obvious what we're trying to do, let's put it right around here. Now, if you want to make this exact as mine, you can actually left click in here or anywhere that um, you see these numbers and sliders, you can click and then type in the data. So 0.675, hue, let's do 0 0.01. And then for value, let's just make it a 0.7. Okay, A is just the alpha, don't worry about that. Don't, don't mess with that, you'll screw things up. Okay, the next thing that we're gonna look at is what's called metallic. Now, um, in life, there are metals, which is a one that makes it, you can see that the shading has changed in its look to what could be called a metallic color. And if we move this to the left, it's what's called a dielectric or a non-metal. Moving this back up here, metallic object, left, non-metal. You don't want to be in the middle. There aren't really things in real life that are part metallic and part not. They're either a metal or they're a non-metal. I'm sure someone's going to say something that there's an object that does that in the comments. That's fine. Just in, you know, a general practice is in shading things, it's either, either a metal that you're trying to get or a non-metal. So, you know, keep that in mind. For this tutorial series, we're not going to be using metals. We're just going to keep it a non-metal. The next thing that we're going to look at is the specular setting right here. And this basically means how much it reacts to the light. If you pull this over to the right, and let's zoom in a bit on this so you can kind of see it. If we pull this down to the left, you'll see that it doesn't really reflect those highlights. And if we pull it to the right, you'll see that it really reflects those highlights. And that's basically what this does. It either, you know, you want it to be really reflective or not. And we're going to leave this somewhere around 0.5. So left click here, type in 0.5, enter, and there you go. The next thing here is roughness, and this kind of confuses people a lot. So um, this basically says if it's a 1, it's a very rough object, meaning that it doesn't really reflect the environment very well. And if you pull it all the way to the left, it's very reflective, like a piece of, you know, hyper reflective plastic or something. And to just show this off a little bit more, I'm going to change this lighting. So I'm going to go up here, change it to this again. And you can see that now it's like reflecting the rest of the environment in a lot more obvious way. And you can see how the type of lighting you have really changes what your object looks like. So um, we don't want it to be this glossy. We actually want to have, you know, something more probably like a, let's do a 0.15, something like that, a little bit reflective, but not too reflective and not too rough. And that's really all the ones that I want you to really focus on for this um, 
you know, very basic materials, just something with um, a little bit of roughness, average sort of specularity, and a red color. And there's a specific reason why we're doing red, so try to uh, match this for now. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to go out of the local view and we're going to change our sphere. So I'm going to left click here. I'm going to forward slash on the numpad to isolate that. And you can see here, this is what I was talking about. There's no material. There's nothing in the node editor. Very simply, you can just click this button here or this button here to add a new material. And what we're going to do with this one is we're going to make this one blue. Now, why blue? Well, if we look really quick at, let's say, basic color theory or something like that, um, you see there's like color wheels and stuff like that. And really the reason uh, why we're picking blue is we're doing basic um, color primary composition. And if we look at an image here at basic primaries, you'll see that it is red, blue, and yellow. Those are the primary colors, and that's why we're using those colors. Now, you're more than welcome to do your own color combination if you'd like, but if you want to stick with me and do something that we know, tried and true, is going to work uh, for our composition and be harmonious, go with these primaries for now. Um, you can do a secondary. basic color secondary, which is going to use the ones in between. If you look at this color chart here, green, orange, and purple, think of the Joker when uh, you have that sort of color combination. That's what's called the secondaries. Um, so, you know, you're more than welcome to try and do some sort of different composition, but um, I just wanted to let you know that that's why I'm doing this. So let's go here to base color and we're going to pick a blue. And we don't want it to be too blue and not too, you know, teal. So we're going to be somewhere in here. And um, let's do a little bit darker, maybe somewhere around there. So here's my values. Uh, let's do 0.6. I hit tab here. I can go to the next one, do 0.6 again, hit tab, 0.8, and then enter. And then I can click off here or just drag out. So let's go with that and let's increase the specularity just a little bit, just to make it a little bit different and roughness. Let's go down to a 0.35. So let's left click 0.35, enter, and let's make that the new color and name it over here by calling this blue underscore sphere. Okay. Getting out of here, we just go front slash and now we're going to go with the uh, cylinder here and front slash again to go to uh, local view, add new by clicking the button. And then down here, base color, like I said, we're going to go with a yellow. So let's go somewhere around here, maybe make it a little darker somewhere around here. And specularity, let's, let's pop this up a little bit to like a 0 0.8, 0 0.8 roughness, pull this down. Let's actually make this more shiny. So maybe a 0 0.05. So that's really shiny. See that? It's like a plastic. And then um, that's going to be that material. And let's call this yellow underscore cylinder. I always spell it wrong. E-R. Okay hitting front slash on the numpad, and there we go. Now, here we have a problem. We're going with this basic triad, right? Red, yellow, and blue. But now we have a, another um, object here that we need to add a material to. So what do we do? Well, very simply, let's hit front slash to go local view again, hit new. And what is, you know, what's gonna work with this composition that has red, yellow, and blue? and we don't really want to add another color. Well, we just want to make this some sort of white. You can make it pure white. You can make it black if you want to. I'm just going to make it a little bit of a lower white somewhere around there. So kind of a gray right in here. And since this is basically uh, you know, a black or white, it's not really going to clash with any of the colors that we've chosen. So then right here, specularity, let's pull this down a little bit. Let's make it maybe a point. 
roughness. Let's actually pull it up just a little bit more. And we're going to make this one more of a diffused look. And that's what we're going to go with with this one. And over here, left click, and we'll call this gray cone. Enter. OK, front slash, and go back out. So here's our composition. Now the final is going to have a little bit of different, um, you know, uh, material settings than what I'm showing here, and probably the render that I showed at the beginning of this video might look a little bit different, but that's okay. You can kind of play with this, find the um, the different sets of materials that work for you, and you know, you can go ahead and do that. Now we're not done. We still have one more object that should be very obvious and large to you. Uh, it's our background. So we're going to left click on this background and we're not going to go into a local view for this one. We're just going to hit new and for right now we're just going to leave this as it is. Go up here and we're going to change this to background. Enter. And that is how you can add materials to your objects. This very very basic sort of setup here. And um, if we take a look here at our material preview, you can see that um, you know it still doesn't look that great. Uh, and the render that I showed you actually has proper lighting setup and all that kind of stuff. You know, so it's kind of like a teaser for you guys. Um, but this is really how you can add materials, very basic materials, to your scene. And if you take this background, you can change this to a black or something, so you can see how you know this cone doesn't disappear, or you can change the cone to a gray and then your background change it to you know the white again if you wanted to there's all sorts of things that you can do to play around with this and I really recommend that you play around with those couple of sliders don't mess with the other ones that I showed you you can even play with the metallic one if you'd like um, but for the final let's not add any metals and you know I really don't think that it adds anything by adding a metal to this at this point so feel free to play around with those and I will see you guys next time when we start to uh, add some more complicated materials to these objects. And first, we're going to start with UV unwrapping. So be prepared for that on the next uh, part. And I will see you guys next time on DJ Tutorials. Thanks for watching. And if you like this video, please hit the like button and subscribe. And make sure that you hit the little bell icon to notify you when new videos are uploaded. And I will see you next time on DJ Tutorials.